guys ready? Uh, my name is Randy Tischler, and so much for being the anonymous voice behind the Baltimore Comic Con. <laughs> well, welcome back to the inaugural Mike Boyringo Comic Book Industry Awards. We're going to try and keep this reasonably quick tonight. I don't know how that's going to work out, but that's the goal. So all you people presenting and receiving, heads up. Um, just real quick, I um, wanted to talk about how this all came to be. Uh, you know, we've, we've done this before, a uh, little bit different. I think a lot of you folks uh, are familiar. And we wanted to continue to do something. We knew uh, immediately after um, the show last year and the announcement that our previous awards were going to be leaving for another show, we were contacted, we don't need to move, it's okay. <laughs> Um, we were contacted by a lot of the people that come to this on a year in and year out basis, fans and pros and industry folks, uh, that they wanted another event and they expected another event. And so Mark Nathan got to thinking and he thought and he thought and after Free Comic Book Day, which is relatively close to the date of this show, <laughs> Lightning struck, and um, he called me. He said, "I've got an idea. I'm going to go down to Richmond, and I'm going to go talk to Matt Waringo, and I'm going to see what this, how this idea floats." And Matt immediately said, "I love it." And uh, Mark talked to family. Mark talked to friends of Mike Waringo, and everybody was really behind the idea of having an award in his name, in his honor, in his spirit. And so here we are. Um, the response before we announced and after has been spectacular. Um, as soon as we went public, the people that hadn't heard before, again, in the industry and out, were very uh, amenable to the idea. They were, they were behind it, they loved it. Lots of social media, positive feedback. And um, the voting response was stunning. Um, better than we had experienced in the past years, um, both on the nomination side, which was a different animal because we involved fans, but on the final ballot, which was just pros as well. Um, it was uh, voters from over 100 countries. Um, it, was, it was amazing. It was fantastic. So thank you guys for participating. So I, I want to recognize uh, some of the folks who have contributed to the event. Uh, bear with me for a couple of minutes here. Again, I'm going to try and keep this quick. Staff from the show, uh, Constance Katsanafis. Did I screw that up? Um, Constance did the centerpieces, which are not lovely. Um, Andy Tran is not here tonight. She helped with a lot of the just planning of the evening, um, had great ideas, and was a contributor. Matt Merritt did a ton of stuff with the nomination and vote process. Matt is in the back. Wait, Matt. for the brunt of the nomination process, and uh, again, it was a voluminous. So, uh, uh, David Jeffrey has done all of the planning for this evening, the banquet portion of the show. I mean, he, he participated in the rest of the planning as well, but uh, if you enjoyed your evening, thank David Jeffrey. David? Steve Conley was uh, critical and key to the success of, of what we have here tonight. Um, he designed the logo, he did the website, uh, did a lot of stuff and, and was very helpful. We appreciate all of his contributions. Um, and we had a, a ton of staff assisting to get the room set to get the tables outside the set, to get the gift bags put together, to get them all put on your chairs, to get the programs put in place. And I can't list them all because there were a ton of them. They were coming and going like these. Uh, John Gallagher. Uh, John Gallagher's coming, don't. <laughs> I got him. I got him. Um, the next people to thank are the jury. The jury um, 
voted for the Ringo Spirit Awards. This was the first time that we have done anything like this, so uh, kind of flying by the seat of our pants. We had good ideas, we had solid kind of guidelines, but uh, you know, these were the people doing it the first time, the pioneers, so give them a round of applause. John Haynes, John Nicholas, Chris Powell, Anna Mean Scanning, and Jose Villarreal. Uh, we also announced perennial judge, uh, jurors that will be you know, returning uh, through the years, assumingly. Uh, Matt Barango, who could not be here tonight because of a, a family member, um, had to deal with that. Uh, Todd DeZago and Mark Wade. Give them a round. <laughs> we will give them a round of applause when they come up here, but. Uh, <laughs> Please put your hands together for the presenters for the night. Laura Hennis and Tom Zoller, Amy Chu and Daryl DMC McDaniels, Kazu Kabushi and Charlie Kutchman, Kutchman, Louise and Walter Simonson, Robin and Terry Moore, Todd DeZago, Craig Russo and Mark Wade, and Tom Reborg. Continue our association with the Hero Initiative, so thank you to Kevin Brogan and Jim McLaughlin for that. The awards tonight, the awards tonight were uh, put together by Josh Gold. He did a lovely job. Thank you, Josh. The program in front of you, the presentation on the screen in front of you, are from John Gallagher. <laughs> Our keynote speaker for the night is David Peterson. You can give him a round of applause after I'm done. And then real quick, our sponsorships, uh, our presenting sponsors, the Baltimore Comic Con and Cards, Comics, and Collectibles, of course. Gold sponsors included Boom Studios, Laughing Ogre, Amazing Comic Shop, Painted Vision Comics, Jeppy Family Enterprises. Silver sponsors were South Carolina Comic Con, Valiant Entertainment, Aftershock Comics, and the gift bag sponsors who this is a fantastic gift bag. It was our first year doing it. We had nothing to base the request on to say, hey, you know, you know you've done this before and do it again. Um, all these people stood up. Abrams Comic Arts, Arts, Aftershock Comics, Archie Comic Publications, Boom Studios, Dark Horse Comics, DC Comics, Dynamite Entertainment, Flask Publications, IDW Publishing, Scholastic, Source Point Press, Tune Tumblers, and Valiant Entertainment. Thanks, guys. I also want to take a moment to uh, remember where we came from. Uh, I learned a lot personally, and I think all the folks that were involved tonight learned a lot from Paul McSpadden. Uh, Paul was the, the guiding light of the Harvey Awards for quite a while. Uh, he's not here with us tonight, um, but uh, I just wanted to drop his name and, and mention a, a note of appreciation to him. Couple pieces of housekeeping. We are live streaming portions of the show. Fair warning. <laughs> Shirts on. Um, everybody who has been here in the past knows Bruce, our photographer. Bruce expects you all receiving awards to exit left. <laughs> because he's going to take your picture with the award, and we appreciate your Bruce would appreciate your cooperation. Um, finally, we have drinks and coffee at the bar just outside of the doors all throughout the ceremony. Keep yourself well lubricated and caffeinated. <laughs> and last but not least, please put your hands together for our keynote speaker, David Peterson. Thank all of you guys for being here as well. This is a, a pretty special night, I think. Um, I also want to thank Mark Nathan, who has treated me like a comic professional long before I actually was one. So I only met Mike Baringo one time. Uh, it was after an award ceremony here in Baltimore. I saw him standing with some people that I knew, uh, Craig Rousseau and Todd Zago. I was very nervous. I knew what Mike was in this industry, and I 
was a fledgling creator. I think it was my first year of publishing a comic. And I very nervously thought, if I go up, and Craig's there, Todd's there, I can say hello, and I can meet, I can meet Mike. I was nervous. He was very kind. Um, and deciding that discretion was the better part of valor, I exited from the conversation rather quickly before I screwed it up. And I felt good about that until I found out later from Craig that they continued to talk about NASCAR, and Mike was saying how great it was. And I missed that. <laughs> um, and I know from other professionals that Mike reached out and talked to creators regularly on the phone. They talked craft. They talked about things that excited them. And I wish I had stuck with that kind of conversation outside of the awards ceremony a little longer, because maybe it would have gotten me my foot in the door where I could have gotten a call, or where I could have made a call. Because I know that conversations with Michael Ringo about making comics would have made Mouse Guard better. And I regret that I didn't get that chance. <laughs> Mike, to this industry, I think represents fun, with an art style that welcomes in every reader. There are no barriers to his artwork. There's nothing about his artwork that says that this is sexist, this is for men, this is for women, this is for children, this is for adults. It was as inclusive as you could possibly be. And it was hopeful. It was optimistic, but without ever feeling candy cut. <coughs> uh, I found out recently, talking to Mark at, uh, at Heroes Con, about an anecdote that I'll share kind of vicariously through them, that uh, Mark was talking with Matt Waringo about Mike getting up at almost every convention and wandering the entire artist alley. And he would walk up to unknowns, he would walk up to professionals, he'd talk with them about their books, and he'd buy their books. Not just published known works, but low print run things, self-published things, hand stapled zines, anything he could get his hands on. And Mark asked Matt, why did he do that? Was it just the collector in him? Was Matt a or was Mike a closet hoarder, like probably many of us are? <laughs> and Matt said no. What Mike was doing was trying to learn. That he thought that out there could be a better answer for any solution to how to tell a story. And that Mike was not below the idea, or not above the idea, of looking at someone just starting out that they might have the best answer for how to tell a story. And speaking of looking to other places and taking good ideas, years ago at a award ceremony here in Baltimore, Ross Ritchie gave a keynote speech. This was the year before Ross Ritchie, who's the president of Boom, bought Archaea, which publishes Mouse Guard. And Ross gave a speech that stuck with me. I called Ross before I did this, uh, before I started writing my speech, and I said, I'm going to use part of your speech as part of the backbone of mine if you're comfortable with that. And he said, that's fine. He was, he was honored. Um, but I told him that the reason for that is it's something that I've literally carried with me. I think about a portion of that speech probably once a month. So just be known that I'm cribbing this part from Ross Ritchie. If you knew someone who had never listened to a piece of music, or had never read a novel, or had never watched a television show, said they had never stepped foot in the cinema or watched a minute of film, you would say, that person is weird. You would think that person's crazy. You would do everything in your power to start suggesting movies and music and poetry and whatever it is, whatever it is that they're missing in their life, you would try it. And when you give them Madonna's Greatest Hits as their music influence, and they're like, this doesn't do it for me. You wouldn't stop. You'd be like, maybe they like jazz, maybe classical. Who knows? But you would keep trying because it's weird that they wouldn't be consuming something that's a method of humans communicating emotion to other humans. Every one of us in this room, including myself, have people in our lives that don't and won't read comics. And we all treat that like it's okay and normal. We might try a little, we might give them a thing, but when they don't do it, you go, eh, 
<laughs> Maybe comics isn't their thing. Well, we should be doing a better job. Like Mike trying to look around, we should be doing better. Comics are a medium for telling stories, as we all know. And comics are just as valid as any other form of uh, medium for telling a story. We're all storytellers in this room. Writers and artists obviously get a lot of the credit. Colors, colorists and letterers don't get enough of the credit, but they clearly guide our eye through those pages and show us where to look and where not to look. Yes, <laughs> letterers and colorists. Editors and publishers are storytellers, and shop owners and retailers are storytellers. Because when somebody comes into your shop and they say, I like this comic, but it ended and I need something new, the way you sell it to them is you explain that comic. You tell them a story, whether it's the story of who the creators are and why they're so cool and you should be reading this book, or what the book is actually about. We're all storytellers in this, in this room. And comics are stories. All humans love stories. We always have. We've been painting them on cave walls and doing every other way of telling a story since. So someone who says they don't like comics is almost saying they don't like stories. And I don't buy it. They haven't been exposed to the right material yet. Every medium has its strengths and weaknesses. Long format TV can do things that film can't. Poetry can do things that novels can't and vice versa. Whether it's music or theater, they all have something that works really well for them and something that they can't do quite as well. But no one of them does everything better. <coughs> and there are things that comics can do better than any other medium. And I bring that up because as a guy who has a movie deal for Mouse Guard going on, I'm very excited about the translation of Mouse Guard to film. No one wants to see that on the screen more than you. That being said, we all need to stop acting like TV and film is the apex of the creative pyramid. Yeah. There is no top, there is no top. We need to validate ourselves. Mouse Guard, I think, was a good book before that movie deal. And I think if it had never gotten a movie deal, it still would have been a good book, or at least as good of a book as I made it. And after the movie, no matter what it does, it's going to continue to be the book that I make. So why are we using something else that's a completely different metric to measure against ourselves? We don't need to validate comics by comparing them to movies. We need to expose people to comics because the validation is in the work. We can be better by treating ourselves better, and not as a pat ourselves on the back moment, but in a way that we convey what we do to those who don't yet know what we do. Movies and TV are so often compared to, to comics because of the similarity in visual medium. I get it. Storyboards that make films look like comics that are comics. But instead of focusing and celebrating the things that are similar about comics and film and TV, why don't we look at the things that they do different? Why don't we look at the things that we do better? and try to sell those to these new readers that we need to be attracting in. The ones that Mike made sure when he drew, there were no barriers to reaching with his artwork. Now, if we start getting new readers, we're going to need to have books for these new readers. Good news, we have them. I have been saying this for a long time. There is a book out there right now for every kind of person, no matter what their interests are in other movies, TV, film, books, poetry, music, there is some kind of similarity in a book that's out there right now. I have a book that ends up welcoming in a lot of new readers. I have a lot of people coming up to my table at conventions who are first-time comic readers. They discovered Mouse Guard, and in addition to coming to buy a CME, they ask me, what do I do next? The this room is scary. I don't know where else I should be going. So I have personal experience recommending next step books by asking the question, either what else do you consume as media, or what is it that you like about my book? I get a lot of wives, girlfriends, kids, non-comic readers asking about the what's next. 
And I love exposing people to the idea of comics that they never even knew existed, because there's one classification of comics that tends to get a lot of attention in our industry. But I like showing them that there are emotional comics, there are soft-spoken comics, there are horror comics that are blood and guts, and there are horror comics that are suspense. There's autobiographical comics. Every category that's in a library, or at a blockbuster, I'm dating myself there, <laughs> on Netflix, <laughs> exists in comics and then some. My two favorite kinds, my two favorite books or book series that I like to recommend are nonfiction comics. One is Bone Sharks, Cowboys, and Thunder Lizards, a nonfiction retelling of dueling paleontologists before there were laws on how digs could be done and how they tried to sabotage one another. And probably just like a lot of you, you go, what, that comic exists? That's awesome. <laughs> and the other one is uh, Rick Geary's series, A Treasury of Victorian Murder. They are nonfiction case files of actual cases. He follows them through all of the facts. If there's a red herring, he'll take you as far as he can with it and then say, that's all the information we have. And the people who are wives and mothers and people who aren't into all the other stuff that comics has so much to offer, they go, what? Those comics exist? Where? I, can you spell Geary for me? Bone sharps and what? <laughs> We have a bigger diversity of genre and style and creators and readers and format than I think we ever have before. Now, full disclosure, I did no research into that statement. <laughs> I have zero facts to back that up. But I've been coming to conventions for 12 years, and it's anecdotal evidence, but I've seen these conventions change. I've seen who's behind the tables change. I've seen the work change. I've seen the banners change. I've seen the crowd change. I've seen the panels change. I think that's a pretty good metric that we have more diversity. We have more ethnic groups, more genders, more types of books than we've ever had before. And we have a broader way to market and distribute comics than ever before because of digital technologies. So that's all great, right? But like Mike, can't we do better? I'm not scolding or chastising anyone in this room. I'm an artist. I'm a storyteller. I'm always looking to do better. I don't hate my old work, but I always see the flaws. And I want to continue to grow, and I always want to be better. So. In the, spirit of the, in the spirit of Michael Ringo, on this night, where we are about to celebrate our medium, which we should be celebrating, and we should be sharing in our celebration with everyone in our lives who has never participated in our medium, I wanted to encourage us all to be proud of where we are, and, like Mike, searching through Artist Alley, looking for new material, looking for inspiration, and looking to be better, I want us all to do what the nominees have done here tonight. Produce good work, celebrate that work, and share it with every other person that we can. So that comics can grow not just by its sales, not just by its readership, but by its appreciation. Thank you. Uh, next up on the stage, please put your hands together for Tom Zoller and Laura Innes. Fans, Tom. Fans. I've got a few of those. On Twitter. 
First of all, everybody in this room was a fan. Pros were included. The very first good chunk of votes that came in were from Comics Pros. You're all fans. Uh, but the response from the web comic sector was stunning. Yes. Yeah. Uh, next two presenters, uh, please welcome to the stage DMC and Amy Chu. Yeah. Good categories, and they're also in big print, you know, because I, I need to get progressives now. So, um, I can't see nothing, so, <laughs> okay, so we can take turns. Okay. This is like, oh, wait, we got to do four? Do four? Yeah, okay, I'll do two. You do two. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, you want to do this? Okay, I'll do the first one. All right. Do I read the nominees? Yeah. Like no, okay, first of all, I'll read the 
category, best cover artist. This is really exciting, and um, I see some friends on here, so this is awesome. Just read the winner. No. 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 Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Today. It'll go quicker. Is this your brother, Frank <laughs> Cho? <laughs> yeah, do it. <laughs> All right. And the nominees are Frank Cho. Oh, you're a Jew, sorry. <laughs> Mike Del Taco. No, no, no. Mike Del Mundo. I got it, okay. J.G. Jones. Hey, that's J.G. Cool. Hey, J.G. Did I pronounce that right? No, no, no I didn't pronounce that right. <laughs> Phil Noto. Ryan so yeah. Fiona Staples. Yes. Santa T. Kayla. Thank you for the assist. <laughs> and the award goes to... <laughs> the best cover artist is... Frank Cho! incredible show. I mean, last night, Linda Carter, now today, I'm getting an award from uh, DMC, from London DMC, and my sister. <laughs> Finally, an American comic book award worth winning. Uh, I'm going to say is, <clears throat> thank you very much, thank you very much, it's the nicest thing that anybody has done for me, the future is alright, in fact it's very bright, as if they're polishing the sun for me, if I had a drum and I would bang it, to give you all a celebration touch, but since I left my drums at home I simply must say thank you very, very, very much. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, before I do this next one, I thought I should, you know, I, I had a dress that I was supposed to wear for this, but I mean, this is what I wore during the convention. I just want to show up. Sure, if it's comics. Everybody. I think that's the message, right? After um, David Peterson's wonderful keynote speech. Um, I'll wear my dress tomorrow, um, but anyway. Uh, the nominees for the 2017 Ringo Awards for Best Series are Faith, Valiant Entertainment, Vision Marvel Comics. Uh -oh. And the award goes to Oh, oh my God. Big show. Yeah. That series goes to Vision. Oh. won every award for 15 years, so... <laughs> Suck it, Brian K. Vaughn! Um, I, I, I had the best team ever with this book. Um, Gabriel, Will, uh, Mike, um, and uh, Jordy. Uh, I'll never get a better team, uh, but I'll try for the rest of my life. Uh, 
I dedicate all my awards um, to the person who um, is my partner and everything, my wife, Colleen, and I dedicate this one to her as well. Thank you so much. The nominees for the 2017 Ringo Award for Best Letterer are Clayton Coles. Yeah. The funny thing about that, I only pronounce it right because they spelled it right here for me. So they showed me how to pronounce it. Taylor Esposito. Todd Klein. Troy Petrie. Yeah. There's a quick pronunciation for that one too. And John Workman. Yeah. And the award must go to the one oh. and only Todd Klein. rather unusual to be the first winner of an award, and uh, I'm, I'm thrilled. I never knew Mike Ringo, but I certainly appreciated his attitude that I've heard about here and elsewhere, and uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Part of, like, as a writer on comics, you know, the co I know that the colorists and the letterers are like, it, they really save the book in the end. And so I'm really thrilled to be able to present this award. And I've, I've worked with some of these wonderful people. I'm going to go through the list Jordi Belair, sure. Tamara Von Villain, Elizabeth Breitweiser. Laura Martin, Rico Renzi, Sarah Stone, and Matt Wilson. And the award goes to. I need to wait for this Oscar moment where it's like, you know, in the wrong envelope, but it's not going to happen. Oh, this is awesome. Um, best colors goes to Laura Martin. Woo! John's kind of a martyr, and that's a big shadow to live under, and, uh, you know, Paul's Paul. But, I, you know, I've been thinking a lot about it, and the, the commonality between comics and the Beatles, and it's a lot. You know, like, you know, letters are the, you know, in the same way a storyteller would be that provide the backbeat, the same way a drummer, Ringo Star, would provide the backbeat for, for comics. So I have a slide. Matt, if you can just want to just a little bit of that. And I thought I would go 
go through a little bit of this and uh, sort of give you a little bit of the history of comics and the Beatles and, you know, because I was really excited to bring the awards. <laughs> You know, I'm, being, I'm being told tonight has nothing to do with the Beatles soundtrack. Um, Alright, well. Yeah, we'll wrap it up. You know, Matt, if you just go through the rest of your time. Skip some of this. Sorry. Um, I was thinking a little bit about the rebranding because I didn't know what it was the Harvey Awards last year and then all of a sudden, um, you know, it seemed like the Harvey Awards plus, that, you know, this, you know, somehow, I figured we were, is it too soon? <laughs> Led us to the Harvey Awards. <coughs> um, oh yeah. so we go. <laughs> I, 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 I don't. I don't read that many comics words. Uh, uh, well, kids. When kids read my books, they'll, they'll they'll choose it as like the you know their reader's choice award. So this is this is kind of weird going right to the podium and delivering the uh, the award ceremony. Uh, so this is kind of new for me. Um, but I am here to announce the nominees for the best humor comic uh, for the 2017 Ring Award, and uh, start with Adventures of God. Uh, Lion Webtoons, uh, Blue Chair, uh, Lion Webtoons, Giant Days, uh, Boom Studios, Hiding Fairyland, uh, Image Comics, Drug Head, RRG Comics, and Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, uh, Marvel Comics. And the award goes to... I Hate Fairyland. And, oh, it's a 
and I'll see the nominees for graphic novels. Awesome. All right, so the nominees for the 2017 uh, Ring Award for Best Original Graphic Novel are uh, Ghosts, uh, Scholastic Graphics. March, book three, uh, the Tom Lewis. Patience, uh, Dan Klaus, Dan Graphic. Tetris, the games people play, Box Brown, first second. And uh, Wonder Woman, the true Amazon, DC Comics, first And the award goes to March, book three. Accepting on behalf of Top Shelf are Khalil Schweitzer and Mike Ford from IDW. Thank you. I've got a quick statement from the March team here. Uh, Congressman John Lewis, Andrew Aiden, and Nate Powell are deeply honored to receive this award. It is our hope that March will be a blueprint or roadmap for the future. That through these books, a new generation will learn the story of the movement, the power of nonviolence, and the courage to speak up for what is right. Thank you very much. Best, uh, the award for uh, best comic strip or panel. Bloom County, Burke Brethren, University of Utah. Nick Tracy, Joe Staten, Matt Curtis, Jimmy Hansen, University of Utah. Hot Shot, Bill Amen, University of Press Syndicate. Mark, Patrick McDonald, King of Utah Syndicate. Carlos Rico Shrine, Stephen Pastich, University of Utah. goes to Bloom County, Berkeley Brothers. We didn't actually realize we'd be accepting this award for Berkeley, so I didn't get a statement or anything prepared. Uh, but I'm sure he would say thank you very much, thank you to the Ringo Awards, thank you to Baltimore Comic Con, and uh, yeah, thank you very much. And the nominees for the 2017 Ringo Award for Best Single Issue or Story are Deadly Hands of Criminal, Image Comics, DC Universe Rebirth, number one, DC Comics, Emancipation Day, RegistricedComics.com, Page number one, Diane Entertainment, and Locking Key, Small World, IDW Public. The award goes to Emancipation Day. We just heard the comments that time. Accepting on behalf of the Secretary of on behalf of Chad Lambert and Mark McMurray, who were the creators of this amazing story. It's hard to distill such a big and important part of history into a two-page story, but they did it masterfully. I'm also here representing Matt Dembitsky, who is the mastermind behind Redistricting Comics. Um, thank you to all the people who voted for this story, and thank you to the Ringo Awards for honoring this medium. And um, thank you uh, for, if you have visited Redistricted Comics, please go back and visit it again, because we've got lots more coming up. And if you haven't visited it, this is my plug, re visit redistrictedcomics.com. So thank you. Russo, Todd DeZago, and Mark Wayne.
Good evening. Uh, I'm Craig Russo. I'm Todd Isaiah. I'm Mark Wade. Our pal Mike was a kind man, a considerate man, a tall man. <laughs> For those that knew him, he is remembered as being friendly and outgoing, considerate and caring to a fault, especially when it came to animals. A fantastic talent who never had any idea how good he was. To friends, Mike is remembered for his smile, <clears throat> big goofy laugh. The thrill and excitement on his face when he was working on something he truly believed in. So being a passionate storyteller who would rework and rework a page or a panel until the story was just right. And to fans who remember him, Mike was always approachable and accessible, inviting and encouraging, whether it be a show or convention or on some of the online forums. Mike always had time to talk with and encourage up and coming artists easily remembering his own hopes and dreams to make it crazy, to make it in this crazy business. He, you know, we've heard many, many stories already tonight, Scotty and so forth, about how he would reach out and the comments he would make would help spark young talent and help them really find themselves. And, you know, how looking over portfolios is sage guidance and suggestions with a catalyst that let them see their own work in a whole new way. Stories about how Mike loved their work and what he saw in them so much that he gave them their kidney, his kidney, and that they would continue, continue to pursue their incredible work. In, in the years since Mike's death, much has been said of his kindness, generosity, his warmth and his compassion, his understanding and his concern, his altruism and benevolence. And frankly, we're sick of it. <laughs> We are so tired of hearing Mike did this and Mike did that. I can't arrest. I mean, it was just he was just a human being. <laughs> he was put on a pedestal and made out the epitome of niceness. He was not nice. <laughs> the man, like you and me, just frustrated and irritated when deadlines loomed. In outrage and vocal when he would see the slightest injustice. The straw when his own perfectionism would have him have been working on, on, uh, on work, uh, working on pages to all, all horrors of the night. Horrors. The reading glasses are hanging in when I'm reading. You are. You're reading now. Very obvious on Rainy Man. He wonders why editors don't call. I, I wrote this. These guys have memorized it. I, I highlighted my lines and it just crossed them out. Sparked the imagination and took the reader on a ride to fantastic places. Featuring characters, both incredible and identifiable, comics that take you away. Uh, and the award goes to... Wait! <laughs> what do you get to say? Red <laughs> glasses. I was blanking here. What do you get to say? <laughs> well, well, because I worked on the board. Why don't we say it together? Say it all along. Uh, yeah, that's going to work out really well. That's really well. <laughs> <laughs> An oiled machine as it is. <laughs> <laughs> I will think of a number between one and ten, <laughs> and the person who's closest to it gets to say. Really? Okay. All right. Okay. Five. Six. I'll say three. <laughs>
Sir, did you go right now? Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. Mike Bell and Art Bell, okay. Jeff Barker. Jeff Barker. Thinking the same thing. Fuck Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. If this award ceremony is to go on and be as meaningful as I imagine it, it can't be weep about Mike every year. We got to stop it right now at the beginning. And, and you, you made me think of an anecdote. I thought I'm, I'm going to get up now. I've got a lot of funny Mike anecdotes, but let me tell the lamest Mike anecdote in the spirit of fuck Mike. <laughs> no, one day uh, when I was in the studio, Arvin was with him, and uh, he and I were just hanging out in between uh, working on pages and eating lunch, and uh, I got out a uh, little fridge we had, I got out this, uh, one of those little Dan and Fruit in the Bottom yogurts. Yeah, I know, you're like, where the hell is this story going? <laughs> and, and I'm opening it, and I'm not paying attention to the fact that Mike's watching me. And I'd start stirring it up and everything, the blueberries and the everything, because it's very sour otherwise. And then Mike goes, what are you doing? And I'm like, I I'm stirring up the yogurt, the fruit's at the bottom. So he says, all right, on that. <laughs> really? That's the way you eat it? And I'm like, yeah, that's the way everybody eats it. <laughs> and uh, he's like, not me. <laughs> I'm like, well, what do you do? And uh, he goes, I just, I eat through the, the sour part all the way till I get to the bottom, and then, and then the, the fruit's like the little reward for me. <laughs> and it stuck in my head for years. Because in a weird way, that's exactly who he was. <laughs> he would just barrel through the most unpleasant things to get to the beautiful heaven at the end. And uh, I, I want to say it as a cautionary tale, because it's like, don't punish yourself thinking you have to suffer for your art. I don't want you to do that. Uh, and I think ultimately he would. Uh, mix up your yogurt. That's, I'm sorry, that, I really belabored that metaphor. Uh, but anyway, I really wish you could have read this book. I think you would love the lead artist, uh, Evan Shaner's work. Evan was a huge fan of his. Um, thank you, Jamins, our editor, who put up with a lot. Um, Craig, Craig turned this stuff in. Perfect. It was great. Uh, and it has a special connection to this show because it was two years ago at this very show. I went outside with Darwin Cook and we hammered out the basics of what would be that story. Uh, you know, so Darwin is all through this thing and like Mike, he is a legend and a giant and uh, needs to be awarded this too. Fantastic and very amusing. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, a bit of housekeeping. Someone left their phone up here when they came. It's got, this, it's got the scream on the back. I have it if you want it. The next two presenters, Walter and Louise Simons. show. We have nothing. <laughs> we have nothing. So I will just say this. Mike Ringo never called me that putz. <laughs> so we're gonna do also I have to get the can so I wish you guys would move along a little faster as we're doing this. You want to read this first one out? Um, the nominee for the 2017 Ringo Award for Best Anthology are Dark Horse Presents Dark Horse Comics, Highland Finish Comics, we just 
And one woman's 75th anniversary, special recent And the award goes to. What's the next one? Best Anthology, Love is Love. Thank you. already so I'm not going to explain the genesis of the project but it was Mark Andreco's idea to uh, get together every professional that he could think that could contribute to this project uh, to really uh, raise awareness but also to pay tribute to all the people that uh, died in the event and their families and uh, thanks to the support of DC Comics and IDW and Jimmy Rich and Sarah Gatos in particular, who did a phenomenal effort editing this uh, very complicated to put together uh, project. Uh, the book actually became a reality, and I was very fortunate to be called early on, and I contributed in every way that I could, uh, not just coloring, but also doing some art for it and recruiting some people for it. And um, it's been a really one of the really most meaningful things that I've ever done in the industry. So it's been a really great honor for me and I'm absolutely thrilled that the award um, has been received by them. I want to actually uh, put out Constance Casafanas, who uh, was uh, instrumental in organizing the second right of this. Constance and her family uh, in Orlando this year, or they did an event that was amazing where they, a lot of the artwork was uh, auctioned. The families of the victims were invited. The organizations in Florida that fight for equality were there. And uh, it was an unforgettable event. And it was a family event. And uh, I was so honored to be able to be a part of it. So along with the hundreds of people I was, that contributed to this, uh, thank you so much for this. The nominees for the 2017 Ringo Award, I hope that this is all written down, for best nonfiction comic work are Cooking Comically, Dark Knight, A True Batman Story, March, Book Three, Top Shelf, redistrictedcomics.com, Rolling Blackouts, Drawn and Quarterly, and Tetris, The Games People Play, First Second. And the award goes to... Best Nonfiction Comic Work, March, Book 3, Top Shelf. Accepting the Top and my board from IDW. But apparently, oh, there he is. I thought it was going to be another guy. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> um, just to echo the statements Khalil said earlier from the creative team, they've been a very much appreciate the award. And what David was saying earlier, everybody's got a copy in your bag, so if you guys haven't read it, please check it out and definitely share it with everybody. Thank you. for the 2017 Retro Award for Best Presentation and Design are Aliens 30th Anniversary, the original comic series Dark Horse Comics, <laughs> Al, Williamson's, Al Williamson's Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, Artist Edition, IEW, 
Britannia, Babylon Entertainment. <laughs> Legacy of Luther Strode, Image Comics. <laughs> Mike Pignola's Screw on Head and Other Curious Objects, Artist Edition, Hardcover, IDW Publishing. <laughs> the Mobius Library, The World of Edina, Dark Horse Comics. ODY-C, Cycle 1 Hardcover Image Comics. <laughs> Spectrum Automatic Pictures. And the award goes to Oh, okay. Best presentation and design. Oh, really? <laughs> Mike Mignola's Screw on Head and other curious objects. Artist edition of Hardcover, IDW Publishing. Accepting on behalf of IDW Publishing by Khalil Schweitzer and Mike Ford. Are we have a statement uh, for this one? Uh, on behalf of the designer, Randy Dahl, thank you very much for this award. Working with an artist as talented as Mike Mignola can be daunting for any designer, so it's particularly rewarding when Mike expressed his admiration for the design on this book. We humbly accept this award on behalf of Randy. Thank you. The nominees for the 2017 Ringo Award for Best Web Comic our girl genius, Phil Folio. <laughs> the middle age, Steve Conley. <laughs> the red hook, Dean Hasfield. <laughs> is, that, is that a mistake? <laughs> Come on! Siren's Lament, Instant Miso. Unordinary Uru Chan. And the award goes to. Right. Oh, good grief. Best Red Comic, The Red Hook. Ricardo Venancio, the late great Seth Kushner, Jamie Fiel, Jason Dunbar, and Frank Renoso, my girlfriend Jen. I also want to thank uh, Krista Cassano for being there uh, those late nights that I was in the studio working hard at this and for being having my back like that. Um, I've been thinking about doing web comics in 2005 from Activate to Zuda to Trip City to Lion Webtoon. Um, I also want to thank Mark Nathan, Brad Tree, Randy, and Steve, and the, you know, the Baltimore Comic Con crew. And, um, of course, Michael Ringo, you know, who directly led to my collaboration with, uh, uh, on the Fox with Mark Wade, because when he passed away, one of the things that Mark and I have been talking about is like, you never know when you're going to pass away or die. So, it, we have been talking about collaborating a lot, and that's what led to our actual collaboration on the Fox. And ultimately, I want to leave with, um, we now have a proven delivery system that means not all comics will make it to print. So do yourself a favor and read some web comics. Yeah. Yeah.
Thank you so much. Presenter for the Hero Initiative Awards is Tom Brevoort. Initiative uh, is the Dick Giordano Humanitarian Award. Uh, people remember, people remember Dick, certainly a great artist and a wonderful editor, uh, but uh, he is probably best known uh, among the many who worked under him as a, a great mentor uh, and sort of a, a friend to all who were uh, in business and who have worked in and around interfere comics. And so, in that spirit, uh, the Dick Giordano Humanitarian Award is given to somebody. Uh, who embodies uh, uh, that uh, sense of uh, giving forward and uh, uh, paying on uh, through the work they do and the mentorship that they undertake. Uh, the, the, uh, with this year's winner, I'm going to read this statement from Jim McLaughlin, who is not here tonight and did not know I was going to do this. Uh, so, uh, to make it bigger, because I'm old. Uh, uh, Joshua Dysart traveled to Iraq and Syria in 2015 with the UN World Food Program to highlight the plight of refugees and internally displaced people fleeing ISIS and the food shortages and fight for survival they endured. Uh, he chronicled uh, this story in uh, a comic book. Uh, similarly, in uh, 2017, uh, Dysart went to South Sudan uh, to highlight and chronicle the humanitarian crisis there. He also uh, depicted these events uh, in uh, comic book form. Uh, and before all of that, in 2007, on his own and without any UN security detail or any kind of protective uh, bubble or anything, uh, he went to Uganda and Sudan to research what would become his run on DC's Unknown Soldier. Uh, much of his work highlighted the real life wars in the region, particularly the enslavement of children and conscription of children soldiers. Suffice it to say, he put his ass in the grass three separate times to highlight, expose, and work on major worldwide problems, chronicling them all uh, through uh, comics as well. Uh, so it's my great pleasure to award this year's uh, Dick Giordano Humanitarian Award on behalf of Hero uh, to Mr. Joshua Dyson. Jim said I had to say some stuff, and you guys have been so funny, and this is such heavy material that I've been dealing with. Um, but I'll, I'll make it really sweet. You know, I've, I've been fortunate to spend time uh, with these people in the most transitionary parts of their lives. Um, kids who've been forced to kill their parents and uh, uh, worse. So um, I just want to say one thing. When you've lost everything, the experiences I've had traveling with these people is when you've lost everything, you're at your base human experience. And that's when you need other people the most. And there's this wall around the world. And on one side of the wall, uh, we eat three times a day, and even the most unfortunate among us have some kind of social system in place. And on the other side of the wall, you live and you die by fate, whether that's a natural calamity or geopolitics or um, uh, anything else. So. You know, those people want their stories told so bad when you sit down with them, they gush. And then, and then you have this weight, and then you carry it back here, and, uh, and, you, and you bring it back to this side of the wall. So it's a heavy, heavy duty thing, and this is an amazing night, and everything's so, so fun, and uh, I really appreciate this. And thanks, and we work in the best medium in the world, and this is the best, most inclusive community that there is, and that's why I stayed in comics, and that's why I do the work in, in comics, because. Uh, this is the best. <laughs> We're the best. Uh, the Hero Initiative, 
Uh, this year's first uh, Ringo Awards Lifetime Achievement Award, and this one I'm going to do without the phone. Um, if you had asked me when I was about 15, 16 years old who the best writer in comics was, uh, I would have named uh, this gentleman for the work he had done and was doing at the time. Uh, he was one of the first fans to uh, join the professional ranks of comics in the 1960s. Uh, he was briefly the editor, in those days editor, but what we think of now as editor-in-chief of Marvel Comics in the 1970s. Uh, he created Blade, he created the man called Nova, uh, he created Bullseye, the uh, Daredevil villain. Uh, he went on to uh, a long story career at DC where uh, he masterminded New Teen Titans. Uh, pretty much destroyed everything we cared about before 1984, <laughs> and, and uh, I stopped paying attention to him after that. But I'm told he did some wonderful work thereafter, uh, uh, both uh, in the world of comics and animation. So this year's Lifetime Achievement Award, very well deserved, uh, to Mr. Marvel. full-time professional comic book writer. Um, this, is, this, is why, this is why this has so much meaning and so much love there. Um, as David said earlier in his opening remarks, everybody has stories. Everybody makes them up. I'm sure every single person here when they were a kid, at one point or another, um, came up with stories just before they went to sleep or when they were playing with the little uh, figures, uh, action figures of dolls, or putting characters that didn't belong together together for whatever reason. And some of us were lucky enough to be able to take that and get paid for what we did free, uh, what we love to do free. Um, those who weren't went on to probably make millions of dollars and get a job with <laughs> health care. <laughs> Which is why I am so pleased that the Hero Initiative is behind this. They exist to give a helping hand to those people who need one, and we desperately need them. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. presentation. If I don't have Mark go that way, I'll get in trouble later. <laughs> All right. Almost there, guys. Last presenters of the night, please welcome to the stage Terry and Robin Moore. Everything. My neighbor, David Peterson, Peterson, not Peterson. And um, so anyway, my arms are dead. And if you want to shake my hand tomorrow, you're gonna to have to reach down to my knee and grab it. Uh, okay, so that's Jinker. 
The nominees for the 2017 Ringo Awards for Best Anchor are Mark Brooks, Jeremy Freeman, Jonathan Glapian, Jason Latour, Jay Lee, Danny Mickey, Sean Murphy, and Victor Alzaba. Who do you think? <laughs> I, I can't because my arms are numb. <laughs> Especially like during Mark's bit, just went on and on. <laughs> okay. The Ringo Award for 2017 Best Inker? Sean Murphy. Yeah. Okay, the nominees for the 2017 Ringo Award for Best Writer are. P.J. Harzma and Alan Tudyk, Jody Hauser, Tom King, Robert Kirkman, Jeff Lemire, Alan Moore, Mark Wade, David Walker, and Gerard Way. Never heard of any of those guys. <laughs> I guess they're up and comers, so let's give one of them a break. And. 2017 Ringo Award for Best Writer. Tom King. <laughs> Suck it, Alan Moore. <laughs> I wrote the button. He, he already wants to kill me. Uh, 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 um, but I love him. Uh, this is absurd because uh, in 2007, I was still working in the government and I wanted to uh, run away. And whenever I want to run away in my life, I run into comics as um, I think this is the best thing comics do. They give nerds places to run to when the bullies are around. And uh, I came to Baltimore to Comic Con, my first Comic Con, because as a kid I was too afraid to go out and see other nerds. And uh, I bought one piece of art from Matt. I bought a Ringo page from uh, Mark Spinezzi Flora. And, uh, and, it, I, and that was my tradition. Every year at Baltimore Comic Con, I bought a Ringo page from Matt. Every, and as I sort of slowly grew, I would stare at these pages, as, and I've got eight of them now. And so when this award is, um, it really means a lot to me. Uh, so thank you. Uh, thanks to my children, Charlie, Claire, and <laughs> Karatsky. And as always, uh, dedicated to my, my uh, lovely wife, Colleen. Daniel Klaus, 
Jan Lords, Instant Liso, and Scotty Young. We're just going to pick the most huggable one. Oh. No. no. The huggable award goes to... Okay, 2017 Ringo winner for Best Cartoonist. Scotty Young. Yeah. I think awards are pretty fucking dope. Um, I just always thought I'd never win them, so I just was like, ah, oh, whatever. But when I saw my name on these, I was like, I really want to fucking win one of these. Because I got my buddy's name on them. And uh, I think you think it's really cool that there's a weird award for this name on it. And also, uh, fuck Mike. Fuck this guy. Thank you guys. So uh, for those of you who won, if you want the little piece of paper with your <laughs> little piece of paper with your name on it that showed you won, we have them. If you want a box for shipping or for bringing this back safely, uh, we have them. Please stop by. Um, these are our awards. Uh, we don't answer to anybody on these. So as we learn as we uh, get feedback, as we make determinations, they're going to morph, they're going to adapt, they're going to evolve. Um, you may not see the same exact thing next year, you may, depending on how we feel we did, um, but it's going to be interesting. Um, but we did great. We did great. <laughs> One more time to the presenters, the nominees, the winners, the voters. Look at the time. I told you guys we were going to get out of here early. It is 10.41. That's pretty good. Uh, one final thank you, and that is to the Hyatt, our host. They're keeping the bar open late. Oh, the centerpieces, yes. Please take the centerpieces. If you are at a table, please grab one of the centerpieces. These are made and they're going home with somebody. So please take them and enjoy your evening. Good night, everybody. <laughs>